Let's get this thing going. Today was mandatory minicamp. The only difference from OTAs from last week, it's the mandatory part. Robbie Anderson did show up. New safety Xavier Woods was the only absence, but he is still excused while dealing with some family matters, according to head coach Matt Rule. Other than that, everyone was there. But not everyone practiced. There were about a dozen of the biggest names on the roster not practicing, not getting after it today. But that's all part of the plan. This is how the team becomes a player-led team instead of a coach-led team. When you're a player and you start coaching, you see, you know, A, sometimes how difficult it is, how, how unique it is. Like, you see all the different gamuts of it, how many decisions you have to make. And so um, I'm not giving anyone off and saying, hey, go home. You know, I'm just changing their role and asking guys to coach. Shaq's done a tremendous job all OTAs of, um, of coaching guys and helping guys. And so uh, I try to make it hard. You know, I had the crowd noise going, so that's harder to communicate. And I think it's a really good thing. Um, it's just guys just getting used to him, you know, and trying to understand him. I think that's the biggest thing. But once you understand him and know what he's about and know what he wants to do, you know what I mean? You're like, damn, it's just like Ron. You know what I mean? You just want to win football games. And uh, I'm not saying they're the same people, but, you know what I mean, we all, like I said, we're all on the same page. We just want to win. And they just want to win. All right, let's bring in our guest for the night, a CSL favorite ESPN Radio's Molly Cotton, who just got back from the CMA Fest in Nashville. Are you recovered from the trip? Uh, slowly but surely, but I just feel like I should say, hey, y'all, or like come in with my cowboy boots or something. It's still in my veins and my soul. You have a boot scooting good time out there? Oh, uh, absolutely. I hope there is no video of that boot scooting, but I had a good time. We wish there was, <laughs> Me too. All right, let's talk about this Panthers team. Um, Player-led team, do you buy it? Do you like it? What are your thoughts? I thought the most interesting interesting thing that Shaq just said is he compared Matt to Ron because it feels like they haven't really gotten to know Matt maybe because of the COVID stuff and everything else or to, to trust Matt. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try not to laugh and make fun of this, but you're trying to have a player-led team instead of more of a coach-led team. How you guys kind of intro that. And is it because the coaching hasn't gone so stellar these first couple of years for Matt Rule? I appreciate the sentiment. I like how you're trying to, to get those leaders. And we know that Christian McCaffrey Shaq Thompson, they are those leaders. They should be those leaders, but it's mini camp. So what, the first day and you can't have guys out there in pads? Can't you be out there participating and show your leadership through that? Show your leadership through your action, through playing good football, through winning football games, rather than, hey, go get them, guys. You got it. Good job. So ultimately, yeah, point. that's what's going to happen. But I actually <laughs> like this. I, I think it's important to set the standard and have your players lead that, lead by example by what the standard is and pulling them off the field when they make a mistake. Like We heard Matt Rule, we heard Cam Noon, and we heard Hassan Reddick talk about this last year, that these guys were like, it's okay, don't fall start, it's all right. And it was just like, enough was enough. It's not yeah. okay. You can't be doing that crap anymore. And it starts early when the players are like, dude, off. You missed the next four reps because of this. Instead of Matt Rule getting in everybody's ear and, and his voice becoming tiresome, Carl. And that is yeah. absolutely true, but why did it take this long? Like, why couldn't those guys have already know. stepped up? <laughs> Like, <laughs> well, Shaq did mention today, you know, it, it, t it takes Matt Rule trusting the players and obviously some trust on the, the players' part for Matt Rule. And this kind of leads us into our next topic, Molly. Matt Rule, we've, we've heard him talk a lot about the process. And when he got this job, he actually said it was a three-year process and this is year three. So does that make you feel better about going into the season that maybe this is going to work? It, it doesn't really because this three years in the NFL feels vastly different than his stops at Temple and Baylor, right? There was improvements from year one to two, and then it could lead you to believe that there would be a significant jump in year three, and that's what happened with Matt Rule in the college ranks. Here in the NFL, there has been zero improvement. Now, I really like what the Panthers have done this offseason. I really like how Matt Rule has surrounded himself with the staff that he's done this offseason. However, I can't go back to that process that he talked about when it doesn't feel like there's been the improvement that you would have liked to see gradually from this head coach. So I'm going to defend Matt a little bit here, but also be fair to Matt. One, there are a lot of mistakes that he made while coaching the last two seasons, and you can't forget about that. But mm -hmm. football is a relationship business. I, you got to win games or else you're not going to be in any sort of relationship. But you cannot coach men whether they're millionaires or in college and not have a relationship with them. Like, they're just not going to listen to you. Yep. They need to know you. They need to know that you know them and that you trust each other. 
Otherwise, it just ain't going to work. And I think that it kind of proves what we went through the last two years, that some of the best teams were the veteran-driven teams, the teams that have been together. And the younger teams had so much to get over and so much to figure out. And the Panthers, listen, the roster was not great. So they weren't going to win a lot of games regardless. Right. But it certainly hurt them more than most that they were not able to have these camaraderie-building sessions as they're doing this offseason. So I think Matt, to his credit, yeah. admitting, like, Carla, like, it was good with for him. With COVID, too. Yeah, with COVID, too, Matt Rule even address I wasn't able to get out in the community people really didn't couldn't approach exactly. me and so therefore you make all these assumptions about who somebody is and I'm sure the players did that as well when you don't have that that face-to-face -face interaction and give him credit Molly because he's saying like I had to do some self reflection I had to get back to what made me successful at those last two stops it doesn't mean that they're going to win the Super Bowl get 10 15 wins this season it just means that he's at least getting back to his roots and doing some things he hasn't actually been allowed to do because like he just said today you put a red circle around him the NFL said you can't really be around each other. And, and again, I like with the staff, you have seen it the action. It's not just, you mm -hmm. know, the talk, all talk, no action. I do like the action that they have taken this offseason, and that does start first and foremost with the staff that he surrounded himself heading into and this year. And that was my biggest critique of the staff in the last previous years. You can't have a rookie head coach and nobody yeah. on the staff that hasn't been a head coach. Yeah. Steve Wilkes, Paul Pasqualoni have coached at every level. They know Love more it. football than you and I will ever no, in our entire lives, so I think it's huge. Let's talk Matt Corral. I asked him today, like, I asked Matt, I said, Matt, rule that is, what do you say to Matt Corral? Like, ignore everything on Twitter. Don't, you know, don't be, don't be worrying about this season. Just worry about week one or next season, whatever it might be. And it says there's just no timetable. What do you think? I agree with that. I think this is somebody you want to stay patient with. And yeah, I think fans want him to really be competing with Sam Darnold. I think it's okay and realistic to think Sam Darnold would be the starting quarterback this year for Carolina. Now, if things do go poorly and then you have to throw Matt Corral in there, that is going to add some pressure. That is going to light the fire under Matt Corral. All of this is assuming these are the two quarterbacks you go into the season with. There is always, you know, the Baker Mayfield. <laughs> stuff floating around. Carla, yeah. if, if Matt Corral starts, it's because either Sam was so bad or Matt was so good. Like, this yeah, is the only yeah. way early. Yeah, and then Matt Rule again addressed that today, saying that players will make you put them in certain positions, and that will all come out, obviously, in the preseason. This is what you want, though, right now, Matt Rule to, or Matt uh, Corral to develop through the preseason and, and just stay ready for when or if that time comes. He just has to like, get his head on straight, get his feet working in together, and learn how to play, be an NFL quarterback before he worries yeah, about how to be a starting confidence. NFL quarterback. Right. All right, we got to move on.